Hi everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. This year I'm going to write a book. A book in a year doesn't sound like a hugely impressive achievement or goal, especially when we live in an era of NaNoWriMo where you write a book in a month, or people on TikTok who write books in three days and all the things like that. But as someone who is a notoriously slow writer, it took me five years on and off to write both of my books so far. I think a book in a year is, you know, a stretch for me. I say a book, I'm sticking to in the 50 to 60,000 word count as my books tend to be on the shorter side, which works out to be around 160 words per day, which when you view it like that, is very attainable. But very attainable for me whose paragraphs are sometimes 160 words long, because I love to monologue, I love to yap. So the book I'm working on is currently affectionately referred to as Best Friend Whip. A version of it's been floating around since 2016, originally called Heart, which is about a blind boy and a deaf girl who meet in group therapy and basically are forced to become friends and not overcome the disabilities, but learn to navigate the disabilities in a way where they can work with each other. And I think this is definitely deeply inspired by the Fault in Our Stars, and I can't elaborate on it much further. Then, in around 2018, I want to say, I'd love to be able to put up my Mavella's fan fiction writing account right now, but it's currently been taken over by AI, so I can't. There was a version that had the lovely, relaxedly long title, The Improbable Probability of Changing the World Tonight, which I'm still very fond of which was two best friends, one of which has decided they're going to end their life and the other one decided to give this person the best, however long they have left, they can imagine. And these are two ideas that in theory are very similar, but I didn't have either of them developed in any way with a functional plot. So I thought, you know, what if I've merged them together into one Franken idea, as again, I affectionately refer to it as. So over the past few years, I've just been thinking about this until this year where I thought, you know what? This is going to be my next book. I love this idea, I think about it constantly, we're going to make it work. So I'd currently describe it as Alice Oseman but in a radio silent solitaire kind of way, and John Green but in a Turtles All The Way Down kind of way. This book is a queer young adult contemporary, it's going to be about the complexities of disabilities and discovering the wrong ways to be not okay, and how platonic soulmates can change your world overnight. Definitely emphasis on platonic soulmates. <laughs> But yeah, it's going to be a book about asexuality and disability and mental illness and how when you think your world is ending, that is not necessarily true. So in terms of writing progress, we're currently in, well, we're currently at the start of May, but I'm going to talk about the past four months and how that's been for me. So I thought I'm not going to do monthly updates because what if I wuss out and decide I'm not going to write it? And then I did write it. So January through March was basically trying to merge these two ideas together. There's about I say about a 10,000, 10,000 word split on each one, probably more like 12 and 8 or something like that. So I had these 20,000 words I had to try and merge together and make work and choose what I wanted to work. So in January I did about 12,500 words, February was 4,000 and March was around 2,000. So I sat there at the end of March with 18,985 words and I thought, you know, there's something good here. It's where, as I was working through it, you know, the actual form of the plot started brewing, I could work on that outline and the characters started to make sense. But it wasn't until April where I sat down and thought, you know what, as someone who usually, I love to edit as I go, and for this project I thought, you know, that's not going to work, so I'm going to start editing something, and then I'm going to get to something that I wrote five years ago, and then it's not going to make sense. So I got to April and I thought, you know, I've written out all the words I have so far, I'm going to edit it in chunks. So I've set myself a goal of like, in April, August and December, I can go back and edit everything I've written so far. So in April, I added another 1,500 words, just sitting there editing. And this is why I really was able to craft the voice I wanted for the book. As up until this point, it was just getting ideas onto page. But in April, I thought, you know, I want to be slightly humorous, slightly witty, very British. And again, very teenage because it's a book about 17 year old characters and I was around 17 when I started writing it, I was more like 15. Because I think the characters were originally 15 and I aged them up and then I thought, you know what, they've got to be suffering through their A-levels to make this work. And I make a joke that everything I ever write is about the horror of being 17 and that very much applies to this book. So yeah, in April I had another 1,500 words and that was very much going through, adding in, because when you get to the end of some of your writing, you realise that, oh, here's where I could like foreshadow these events, here's symbolism I need to go back and add, anything like that. I did those words. I found the voice that works for me. At this point, now that I have 20,000 words, which is, you know, kind of 40%, kind of not really, of this book completed, I think, you know, maybe I want a beta reader now who can like tell me, like, is this good? Is it working? 
because I haven't started writing a like new project in years. I wrote my first book, Beauty and the Breakdown, and my second one, Paper Forests, largely on Novellas, which is, you know, a fan fiction website where you upload it chapter by chapter and people can comment as you write. And I was not popular on these sites, but I had a slight audience where I was getting, you know, one or at least one or two comments per new chapter. So I've grown to love this chapter by chapter feedback. And as someone who loves fan service, you know, I will go in and write in the plots that my fans wanted. And now that I'm sat here alone, decaying over my keyboard writing this story, I'm like, you know, is it good? I need someone to brainstorm with, to bounce off ideas and just like, tell me like, what, like, what do you actually like about this? Because at the moment I'm very much writing this book for myself. It's definitely the book that I needed when I was 17. And I want to know like, you know, does someone else like this? So, you know, as we are going into May now, I've already <laughs> wrote 2000 words so far, which has been around kind of 400 words per day. But I'm going into the next chunk of like pre-written stuff I had and then a few extra chapters I had because when I was suffering through the first 20,000 words there was a lot of new things I had to add in. Because I used to think that, oh, chapter 5 and chapter 6 used to go next to each other. But as you know, I merged these ideas together, I realised that, you know, there should be three chapters in between chapter 5 and 26. There's a project that I find challenging, I really love it, it makes my brain work properly. And I can't wait for this book to be done. Because I, I have a cover for this book. I've been thinking about it for so long that I've designed the cover. I know exactly what the interior is going to look like. And I think closer to the time, I would love to make more videos about the process of making books for, you know, indie authors, self-published authors. Because this will be an independently published book under my lovely fake publishing company, Little Oaks Independent Publishing. And I would love to share what I have learned with you. That's all I've got to say about this book so far. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.